the blind and the lame, mothers and those with child, the very ones who would slow down the group and would have been set aside and left behind by Israel's captors. Yet uh, Jeremiah highlights them as being included when God acts and does what he has promised to do. God doesn't act with ruthless efficiency, but with love and compassion. The Israelites were to be an image of God's renewed humanity. They had entered into a covenantal relationship with God, a relationship ordered to change, to conversion, to new life. They had been given the Ten Commandments, a just way of living with one another, so that when they inhabited the Promised Land, well, they could be a light to the nations. Look, here's how to live well with one another. Here's how to truly love one another. Here's the one, God, from whom all good things come. Yet the same darkness that clung to everyone else clung to them as well. And they became not an image of renewed humanity, but sort of an anti-image. They obscured what God had in mind. So they lost the temple. They were exiled from their land. But there remained a faithful remnant. These are the ones from our psalm who sow in tears, but reap harvest, rejoicing. They're the ones who go forth crying, weeping, carrying seed to be sown, but come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Yet as beautiful as this sounded, it became understood as being incomplete. What about those in the faithful remnant who died in exile? Where's justice for them? Where's rejoicing? Where's consolation? And what about those who returned to the Holy Land but found that they were still living and dying in enemy-occupied territory? Gradually, returning from exile was identified with deliverance from sin and its effects like illness. It became identified with returning to friendship with God. And returning from exile ultimately became identified with resurrection from the dead. So for someone to be concerned for the blind and the lame and to heal them, for someone to embrace a child and say that unless you turn and become like one of these, you will have nothing in the kingdom of heaven, for someone to rise from the dead never to die again meant God is fulfilling his promise. He's dealing with sin and bringing back the exiles and freeing the captives. Now, but notice how the healing of the blind man concludes. Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The blind man's way became Jesus' way, which was, of course, the way of overcoming sin, of cross and resurrection, of return from exile. It reminds me of this conversation I had this past week uh, with James Arkell. You know, he and his wife have a special needs child, wheelchair-bound, nonverbal, and you can hear their sadness, those sowing in tears, not being able to join together with different ways, being separated because of that. James is the one particularly behind this massive development proposed here in Olathe off of 119th and I-35 thereabouts, you know, a $300 million project in which there will be a place for families with special needs to go, kind of a one-stop shop where community partners will be there instead of having the family go here for dental, here for vision, here for your general practitioner, 
here for all these needs, it'll be in one place to help assist them. But then the largest part of the investment is, well, it's hotel rooms, it's venues, it's food, and it's what he calls a full access theme park where there's only one ride, a zip line, where someone in a wheelchair has to be transferred. Otherwise, all the rides are accessible to those in wheelchair rides along with their families. Can't you just hear behind that those who sow in tears? Well, they come back rejoicing. They begin to collaborate with God in what's renewing all of creation, setting things right, of loving those who are often overlooked. You know, certainly we're reminded on this day in particular of John Paul II, all the way to the end, witnessing to the dignity of every human life as he suffered from Parkinson's and still stood in front of everyone time and again with his limitations suggesting don't overlook the elderly, don't overlook those who are infirm, they still have value, they still are loved by God and present to him. And perhaps we can also think of our own call here, John Paul II, to participate in assisting the world exiled from God in returning to the one from whom we've wandered. You know, tonight, you know, on this feast day, I'll share with you just a few updates. It seems fitting. Um, As we, well, as we work with God to fulfill our calling. Try to operate both of these. So where we'll focus tonight will be on the school that we purchased, which is where we're going to have the bonfire at 6.30 tonight. Uh, Here are just a few of the architectural drawings that have been in the works. You know, I think I said a number of weeks ago when I did a video on this that soon we'd begin demo of it. And that was the plan until the county sort of advised us instead of breaking everything apart separately to submit to them so that we could go ahead and get a start, but not do the whole thing, which would take more time to get all the plans done. They really advised, well, get the whole thing done instead of submitting it piecemeal, uh, because every time you submit something, you have to pay something, and they weren't all that keen on doing a large number of reviews. So that's why demo has been uh, delayed, but the overall project is is still on target uh, to be completed in May. So here you'll just see Uh, an overhead of uh, the location, so it's over here, 175th in Merlin. Pictured above is the multi-purpose room. Right, so what I want to point out here, and I'm sorry for those in the back, I'll see if I can zoom up just a little bit. So here's the, the current uh, driveway layout. So Merlin over here, 175th, along this way. Now what you see here kind of darkened, the shaded areas are the areas of asphalt that are going to be uh, evacuated, um, demoed. Uh, so th- there are certain protocols that all schools need to follow, one of which is having a sufficient number of cars that can be stacked on the premise for uh, drop-off and pick-up. So you have a number, uh, it just depends on the number of children, that's the number of cars, etc. So this is not something we expected when we purchased the property. So yes, think of dollar signs going up just a little bit. Um, But it was the only way um, that we were able to get uh, the application approved. So the rework uh, will look like this. So you can see instead of four entrances and exits, it's brought down to two uh, so that you'll only access the property through 175th, uh, which you'll turn over and then the driveway will go along the east side of the school and then exit over there on Merlin. 
uh, with additional parking uh, worked into it. So the traffic updates look like that. Uh, and then uh, this is just a little bit of detail on the turn lane that we'll have to go in on 175th so that we uh, are safe and don't back traffic up. And then let me back out just a little bit here. Here are just uh, some of the elevations of the school. Uh, nothing structural really is changing. There's a few interior walls uh, that will be changed. Uh, but nothing else. This is the demo plan uh, for the interior. I know it's a lot of detail uh, that you're not going to be able to make out. Um, but basically, what you're seeing here is the removal of some um, interior walls that were a later addition, which will create a, nar a nice large space for our CGS atrium. So that'll be an integral part of, of our um, approach, of our life there. Uh, you, if you can see, maybe right here in this area will be a small chapel, which is um, unusual, I think, in grade schools to be able to have the Blessed Sacrament on site. So that's central, as you can see in the layout, to our life there. What that will allow us to do is then open these doors and the altar will be um, movable and then be able to have mass there. We're planning twice a week uh, to have mass. Uh, a couple other little points is on this main entrance. Maybe you can see this here. We're adding this wall here as a second tier of security so that uh, people would be buzzed in here. So there'll be cameras, recognize the person, they'll be buzzed in. But this door will remain locked until we can identify the person, right, and make sure everything's safe and good to go, and then we'll go in. Now, what doesn't uh, come out on this plan is that the everything but basically the bones of the building will be um, new, renovated. So new roof, uh, new mechanical, new ceiling, new flooring, new paint, all new glass all the way around uh, the building, New fell safe doors, I think is what they call them, so they can't be propped open with key card readers and such. Um, and then just a little bit of work done on the western side, this big area to create a couple classrooms. That, whoops, there. Uh, which you can see, so that's the uh, kind of the finished drawing. Maybe it's a little easier to read. Uh, so a room over here, the multi-purpose room, the vestibule offices, administrative offices, and classrooms, and then the uh, addition on, on that west side. Uh, here's a little detail just about the expansion of the uh, bathrooms. And as you'll see in just a moment, all the classrooms are going to receive new casework. So there's all the drawings and such for all the the cabinetry and casework throughout the entire building. Here's a picture of the present uh, multi-purpose room um, with stage, nice deep stage. Um, and then the drawings of that uh, colors are not finalized, uh, but you get a little sense of there. Here's the current, um, what will likely be the pre-K area. I'll get into that in a, a minute. and. And then here's the, um, the drawings of that, architectural drawings of that. You'll see it, you're seeing it from one vantage point and then the other. So you can see all the casework along that wall will be new. Um, and then that wall over there, which would be the east side, will be new uh, as well. Here's a typical classroom. They're large classrooms. And then here's the drawing of that. Again facing one direction and then the other direction. So all the casework and such uh, is new there. Right. Yeah, so that's just kind of a basic overview of where we're at. So we're getting very close to being able to step forward with it. We've had a couple of good presentations on our academy, what to expect, and beginning to um, take in survey information. Um, a couple of thoughts. Uh, that I'll share with you. 
uh, on this. Um, one, it's been a year and a half ago, I was visiting with the superintendent in Oklahoma City, um, and he, he was saying that there's a real value in being able to start your program in a building that's not brand new. He said, because what you find if you have a brand new building is that you get people who, well, they, they want to join in because you have a brand new building, not because of what you're offering academically or spiritually. All right, so he said there's a real advantage to being able to start out in this way um, and then move from there. So you're able to set your culture um, as, you, as you want it. And then, technically, I'll, I'll kind of express this to you the best that I can, see if I can get your help with it. You know, there's um, a tremendous trust that's required of parents who are sending their kids to school, right? Tremendous trust that's needed. And so I'm... I've been so impressed by the parents who have said, yes, I want to go ahead and move forward with this. I mean, I can't walk through the building yet, but I hear what you're doing and I see what you're doing and we believe in what you're doing. But you know how social media can kind of funnel things to you, you know, and then you get in kind of a one track lane just a little bit. And there's a little bit of that out there, I think. So we heard this the other night that um, somebody was wondering if we were actually going to have full-time teachers because they heard that we were going to have volunteer parents in the classrooms running things um, without, without credentials. <laughs> um, and w- we can say, <clears throat> well, credentials themselves aren't sufficient for what we plan to do, right? The, the bar isn't set there, but it's set above that, right? So what we want to be able to say is this... Um, is an academically rigorous approach that will benefit the whole humanity of your child. Now, the concern that I have is if you get stuck at this time in one of those little strands of social media, for example, we only have limited classrooms here. This is a limited size building. And priority when we enroll will go first to people in the parish. But what I notice at these presentations is that there are a lot of people from the metro area who have discovered what we're doing and we're here staking us out and already asking about when can I enroll and get in line. Once we offer it to the parish, then we open it up to those beyond the parish. And once they're in, right, they're in. We don't kick them out if somebody decides later, hey, we're going to go in. So I want to encourage you, um, when the opportunity is offered to you, boy, take that opportunity. It's, it's one in a lifetime. So the school, we're moving forward. I'm very grateful for the work that's being done both at this level and then um, more programmatically with uh, Jenny and Sheila. And then to close with, just a brief little update on this. So this was the update that we provided in April when we started which is great, almost $2 million, right? That's a great start in April. And then that's the update that we provided or close to it um, a couple of months ago. That's extraordinary. I mean, really, for a parish of less than 700 families to be able to do this, I mean, this is all from within the parish, right? That's more than the archdiocese, you know, brings in on their capital campaigns. Right, I mean, think about it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so it's very impressive. Like I told you back then when I made this um, update, gave this update, covering what remains is uh, a significant project. Right? It's gonna take a lot of work and we are working. Um, grants, yes, but also pursuing other leads on the funding. So it's gonna be several months in the work um, and that's okay because we need to get things finished up with the school um, before we'd really be able to take the next step with this. So I would say, mm, I don't know, winter, springtime, something like that would be the next update that we'd really be able to get for you on this so we can get everything else situated. Sound okay? Yes, yeah, so, so we're looking May to open the doors to move in and then... Uh, Well, we're already being recruited or recruiting teachers, so we feel very confident about uh, getting top caliber teachers and opening the doors to the children in, in August. You know, thank you for your attention.
and happy feast day.